Welcome to the Special Delivery Podcast. I am your host, Special, and welcome to this series for Grand National's album Twice on Sunday Season 1, where each episode is a breakdown of a different song from the album, and these are standalone episodes, so if you want to listen to one, you want to listen to them all in order, out of order, it is all good. On this episode, we're talking about track number four, The Young, Black, and Beautiful. I got to talk with DJ Basta, Champ Green, D. Bledsoe, Mo Green, Brookfield Deuce, Kevin Allen, and Ian Kelly all about the this song and I also want to acknowledge SK who did production on this as well as Kate Lamont and Black Achilles who had a verse on this song all incredible contributions to this song now let's get into it I'm DJ Basta from Grand National Roots and Branches yes yes DJ Basta is here I'm so excited we've been talking about doing a podcast for a very long time and I apologize we haven't done yet it's just there's so many projects I don't really know where to start so I'm glad we're starting here it works yeah. out yes yes how you doing today good glad. yeah I've been spending some time out the way just getting grounded enjoying summer that important stuff man it's so good we gotta talk all about your production on twice on Sunday we gotta get started with the young black and beautiful just gorgeous vibey there's like this xylophone keys-esque nostalgia to it what was it like making that one that one was really unique because that was like probably one of the only tracks that happened like all on the spot in the studio that was probably musically one of the tracks that really shows like the diversity of the crew and the sounds you know it was some drums that i laid down and then i think it was kevin hopped, hopped right on the keys and kate was on bass and then SK was adding some layers and just kind of really turned into this organic track in the space. And I think to me, that was like, especially just being a producer and all the moments with the rappers and the singers definitely have like a unique magic. But that moment where it was like the production magic happening for me was like one I really felt that was like a really special night of just like everybody throwing their their like seasoning in the pot and it turning out into something. I think a big part of it, too, was like Kate's voice. Like Kate's voice was almost an instrument. And we kind of treated it that way in the mix and like how we wanted to place her and making her sound like an old sample and like trying to really bring the texture out. Yeah, and that was something that's interesting, too. I mean, just the collaborative aspect of it. There's only a few tracks on here where you only see one producer. So kind of collaborating as producers, what was that experience like for you? It's cool. I mean, I, I love collaboration. So whether it's like, you know, my day work of educating young people, I see the work I do with youth as a form of collaboration, being a producer, a DJ, like working with art vocalists is, has been a huge part of, of that journey. So I love collaboration. And I feed off of it. As far as production, though, a lot of times it's awkward producing with other beat makers as much as that's something that, you know, I'm, I'm a part of a community of a bunch of beat makers. We'll be in the lab together. We share kind of like secrets and tools and tricks but a lot of times when it comes down to like multiple producers getting on a track together that can be really awkward or like you know someone starts it and someone takes it and it doesn't come back so just the process of i think a lot of it was just like the trust the ego like being pushed to the side you're now rocking with champ green from grand national twice on sunday out now Birds eye view with the bass and piano just more ambo to act like rambo shooting at the targets off garlic and lethargic Pardon, nigga, let the drums just roll. Nigga, back to life like so to so, but nigga, so they so. I'm just selling the jug. Philly cheese got blunt. The switch to the woods. Big miss up. Oh shit, culture evolution. Chinatown game. Migo distribution. Who losing? Who winning? Who grinning? I'm sliding through the town straight wiggling. Yeah, uh, back on the bar, uh, back on the bike. Life in the traffic jam. Call it what you like. I might get this line wrong. I'm trying, so feel, okay. feel free to correct me. We don't work. <laughs> uh, back on the bar or back on the bike. Life in a traffic jam, call it what you like. I think that you're not only playing on traffic itself, possibly trafficking, that's none of my business, but in life there's traffic jams. And I think that you sum that up well. What was it like writing that one? 
being young, black, and beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. So not only just getting back to the essence of past, doing the presence, but staying present, right? Mm -hmm. So it was only right that I, you know, just give rapper a present and present it in that form. So my actual thought process came from a song by Pac from a soundtrack called Life in a Traffic Jam. That bar was for that, mm -hmm. right? And then back on the bar to back on the bike, you know, Life in a Traffic Jam, call it what you like. So anyway, you got to commute, yep. you know, you got to get where you need to go. Sometimes it may be traffic, you know, whether it's traffic on the bar or traffic on the bike, or it's like, it's going to be a traffic jam, but it's how you take that traffic jam. You know, you can be in a traffic jam and be like irritated, but it's beyond your control. It's just how you react to it, but it's about perspective. Yeah. So it's like, you know, how people say the glass is half full or half empty, right? But if you can really just simplify it by saying, hey, there's water in the glass, you can be able to start from there. You know what I mean? So Yes, yes, yes. So. This is D Bledsoe with Special Delivery and special. This is Grand National. Bombs over Jerusalem, my eyes water and the air is hella bad. Chevron settled to kill me early. I was taught to keep from acting whirly, and that's ironic when my country dumb smashing or hurt me. Or avoid me, do as the Romans do. Big black invisible, you can't ignore the fashion. Christ, did you hear me? Am I right about this passion? Greater is he residing in me. Who am I asking? I is a guy. Proclivity for action. If you ever to remember me, I needed to be major for the pain I endure. Somebody finna be better off. This one feels like a letter. I'm super into when artists write letters in their verses, and yeah. this one felt like a letter to me. I mean, it could be anything or both, but was this a letter to God or to yourself, or how would you define that? Um, that was really more my critique on the news, mm -hmm. like on the daily. I was looking at what was going on, and I don't even know if, if we had uh, sheltered in place, whatever you want to call it. I don't even know if any of that had happened yet, but just... Things seem strange in the air. And so I was like, I think I need to speak to what's going on in the current time. I'm pretty sure the bombs over Jerusalem came from something that I was reading at the time, but just thinking about wars in the world and, and how much we ignore shit that's outside of our peripheral. Like if it's on the other side of the world, we don't really care that much. But at the same time, it's some real shit going on. So with that, but then I brought it back to Richmond when I said uh, Chevron settled to kill me early. And if you know about Richmond, we've had fires at the Chevron refinery. We've had uh, chemical spills in which they've settled with us of a certain age group. <laughs> yeah, and we got paid when we turned 18. We call it 18 money. But at the same time, nobody ever thought about what we're getting paid off for. So that's where that line came from. Chevron settled to kill me early. We don't even think of it. We, we got paid a check. Did what you, what you did with your check and you got to live with uh, the repercussions. But the fucked up part about it, everybody I know from Richmond has somebody in their family that has died from cancer. It's Aaron Brockovich all over again and nobody really talks about it. So again, my verse on uh, Young, Black and Beautiful was just talking about what's going on being a black man from this area and my take on it. Even the lines about you can't ignore the fashion. Like I walk through downtown Oakland every day, reading a book, pushing my baby in her stroller. And there's certain people that refuse to look at me in my face or won't even acknowledge me. And I'm the type of person I want to say what's up to everybody. I want to make sure my surroundings are good. And it's just polite to acknowledge people. We're not in metropolitan New York City where it's a thousand people on this block at a given time. Look at me, acknowledge me is, is kind of fucked up when you're walking down the street and people don't even want to acknowledge your existence. So that line was, was really big to me as well. This song was just hella special. Kate killed it. I mean, it's so much I could say, <laughs> say about Young, Black, and Beautiful because I've heard um, press concerning our project saying that there's a lack of a woman presence on there and Kate is clearly on this project and then the missing elements of, of demographics but I just feel like the way this came together was perfect and the match with Kate and us and what's going on in the world really put all of this shit together in a way that was cohesive and really made sense and makes a statement so I hope people look a little deeper into it especially with songs like Young Black and Beautiful. That's disappointing that people had that outlook <laughs> on it. I'm like really disappointed at that. But. It's, it's a little bit of nitpicking, but you know what I mean? You can't please everybody, but at the same time, we want everybody to know the intent was pure and there wasn't one demographic or another left off of this project on purpose. It really just came together 
in a way that we didn't even intend. It was unintentional, but it was so dope how it was put together. So It's expression. When you express, you don't think about, oh, well, we got it. No, and it was the first one. Like, I don't know. It, that's... <laughs> Again, you can't please everybody, yeah. but we we hope that the people that do fuck with it enjoy it and just again understand it, it came from a pure place. Goodness. What's up? It's Mo Green. Shout out to Special Delivery Podcast. Shout out to Grand National. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm representing today and forever and always. If I say it, then I'm doing it. The unfatable shaking the norm, taking the form or something shaking the farm. Cash crop, green print, money, dummy blasting off while you catting off. Suck and take your final shot like the last call. I wasn't in my final form when they passed on. The ghosts are driving the whip, I ride shoddy on them. The shit is sick, I pay respects, I pour the toddy for them. I'd rather drink soul, blow to be your nigga. This is art, get the picture. All of this is scripture, this is victory, get at me. I'm standing on top of caddy, feel invisible, shirt swinging like North Kakalaki. Green! I might get this wrong. Closed captioned, if I said it, then I'm doing it. Yeah. Like, when you're watching, like, the movie with the caption on it, so it's like, yeah, if I say it, then I'm doing it. So, like, this is what's happening. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, you know, we've been whispering and I'm up be doing this shit. I got a deaf uncle and shit, so I know my mom be watching hella shit. Closed caption with him, so I'm just like, it's kind of, like, click like that. Yeah. So, like, if I said I'm doing this shit, if I said it, it's done. Shout out to Will Smith. I think I heard him in an interview recently, not recently, but it was an interview saying like, yo, in my life, I, I accomplish it. If I say it, it's already done. I'm going to just do this shit. Like, ain't no point in fucking, I'm going to do this. I'm about to do this. I'm about to do this. I'm about to, no, if I tell you I'm doing this shit, this shit's getting done. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like that's something I, I also still trying to implement more, but I actually started doing that a lot more in my life. So it's like, I ain't going to tell somebody about some shit unless, I'm, unless it's at the table. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to start this. Nah, it's already, then about to get in motion right now. I'm just letting y'all know. You know what I'm saying? So that's just kind of how I decided to move. Yeah, shout out to Will Smith, babe. I'm praying for you, bro. You know what I'm saying? For more on that, uh, tune in to Things About Green. Tune in to my podcast for more about entanglements and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, <laughs> but I think that... It comes with growth. When we're younger in our 20s and stuff like that, it's very much like, I'm doing this and I'm doing that, or I said I was gonna do this, but now I'm doing that. Yeah. And it's like, once you're really looking at yourself and really taking inventory and doing growth, like you understand the importance, not only for everyone around you, but for yourself to be like, oh, okay, I said that I'm doing it and I'm doing it. And being able to follow through, I think is such a powerful experience it just helps in everyday life you know yeah what I mean? man you want to be that dude like oh i'm about to i'm finna i'm about to do this i'm i could do it just do the shit man fuck it you know what i'm saying just try it if you fuck up it is what it is bro you only do this shit one time you know what i'm saying unless somebody can prove different you know you only do this shit one time so do what you want to do man and then we talked a bit about it with Upper Room, but I think, like you said, a lot of this project for you is grieving out loud. You said, I wasn't in my final form when they passed on. I think that that's an important line because it can kind of go both ways. Like I kind of see it as they didn't see you make it. You weren't in your final form as far as making it or just being prepared for them to go and being in your, I mean, you're never going to be ready, but being in a place to accept that they passed on. What was that line like for you? Yeah, because I've been dealing with that shit since my uncle it's just like hell, everybody dying and shit. But hell, recently though, I've, I've lost hella aunts and uncles and shit like that, and cousins and shit like out of nowhere. Now some violence, but people just been getting sick and dying type shit, and it's crazy. And they all had major parts. It's not like some distant family where it's like, oh, it's my auntie that lives in Tennessee. I ain't seen in my whole life type shit. These are my mom's brothers and sisters and shit, and my my first cousins and shit. So it's like I wasn't in my final form. Each of these people had certain pieces and parts to make me who I am, right? So it's like, damn, my uncle or my aunt or my cousin didn't get to see me get a house. Like, they never saw me in a new car. They never saw me, none of this shit happened. They never saw me get married. They never saw none of this shit. They never had to hear this shit. I know my cousin would have loved this shit. He passed away before this came out. You know what I'm saying? I told him I had this shit coming out. But it's like, sometimes you feel cheated. It's like, fuck, man, y'all helped me do all this shit and y'all never got to see the fruits of y'all labor. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I really meant. So, like, the ghosts are driving the whip. I ride shoddy on them. Like, they were the motivation now. You know what I'm saying? This shit is sick. I pay respects. I pour the toddy for them. You know what I'm saying? So, it's like, trying to understand. It's like, fuck. I mean, unless they looking down and seeing all this shit, which I hope they are. But it's like, damn, I wish y'all was still here. Like, my kids ain't gonna know y'all. Like, you gotta settle with that shit. You know what I'm saying? So, 
I didn't get to make it to where. And then you look at yourself on some shit like, damn, was I bullshitting the whole time? Because it's like, fuck, I should have heard Ben did that shit while they were still here. Then maybe I wouldn't have to do. I wouldn't have to write that line. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, then you got to look into yourself like, damn, nigga, what the fuck was I doing this whole time? You know, I'd be tripping off that shit. Like, I remember being at South by and seeing like Wiz Khalifa walk down the fucking 6th Street. You know, he has camo shorts on and shit. He was cracking, don't get me wrong, How Fire just came out. But they was doing their thing, but it's like, that nigga then took the fuck off and was on some different shit. Like, you see certain people take off. Like, I done open for Kendrick Lamar at the fucking uh, New Paris and shit, you know what I'm saying? But what the fuck was I doing this whole time? You know what I'm saying? You ever think about that shit? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You ever see a thing like, no, you ever see a thing like, what the fuck was I doing this whole time? You know what I'm saying? But everybody got their own path, but at the times you trip off that shit. And then you look, and people start passing away. Then you really like, fuck, man, I should have just did what I had to do while they were still here. So now it's on me, like, all right, those who are still here, it's time to go even harder because I don't want to feel that shit ever again. Like, that shit is out. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's where that shit come from. I will tell you every time it's so powerful and, and so important to have that outlook because we've had conversations about how, you know, things mm -hmm. happen to people and they just use that to not deal with it and, and not continue to do things. And, and it's not easy to have the frame of mind that you do, but it is so important. So I always got to commend you on that. Yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate it. No problem. What's up, y'all? It's Brookfield Deuce. Represent East Oakland, California. Represent Brookfield, California. Front page music, Grand National ENT. Yep. I'm one of them niggas that be like, shit, that ain't nothing but the cabbage patch. Filled the holes in my jeans with a denim patch. Miss lunch filling my pockets with the dinner batch. Whip it like great granny in a gumbo pie. Picture like Doc Gooden on a cocaine spot. The mirage never dries at the sprinkler pop. Gotta flood the ground to match what the pharmacy got. RC said that's very ill. They gave us candy seeds. The vaccine like a molly pill. Percocet, molly molly percocet. Government get it first, I gotta get it next. Nigga snitching for the dope, probably rep your set. The three letter boys sitting like that's a bet. I work hard, escaping death before 23. Now I got role models trying to be me. Just being able to express yourself in that way, what does that writing process look like for you? Mostly, I'm in a room with aliens. Yes. Yeah, so if I don't leave, I don't leave Earth, <laughs> I'm going to get washed out. I'm, I'm not trying to do that. I'm not trying to get washed out. Yeah. So, like, when I was younger writing, I would try to look for a central message, and I would have maybe one bar that I felt like was real heavy, and... You know, a lot of people would tell me what you were talking about was dope, but you kind of started slow and then you kind of ended slow. It didn't punch me. So I try to focus on like my first line and my last line being, you know, very heavy yeah. in the room of everybody being so great lyrically. It made more sense for me to just be like the elder statesman in the group to say I'm one of them that be like that ain't nothing but the cabbage patch. Like how when you see the old people and they be like oh that ain't that ain't nothing but shit that ain't nothing but the funky chicken you know and you be like what are you talking about grandpa you know what i mean and it's like that's me i'm i'm the one that looks back at stuff and go it's nothing new under the sun i'm the one that is focused on trying to figure out the best way to inspire the youth to tell the people that come under us this is how you do it back to you know elijah oakland hearts is like him being in a room with people 10 years older than him is going to catapult his, his knowledge by 10 years. So people in his age bracket are gonna be like, I don't know how he's doing this, this fast, this early, but it's because the people that are around him have already went through the trials and tribulations. He don't gotta walk through the valley no more. He could just, he can leapfrog it, you know what I mean? So for me, that's really what the verse was about for me. Like just talking about all the things that, you know, we go through like with the government and the abuse that we that we receive and these vaccines with the coronavirus and just all of the ways that we have to like be aware, you know, like being older is like the wisdom. So my verse was focused on like the wisdom, you know, definitely. I love that. And it, the cabbage patch just adds a little bit. Of, it's just yeah, it's funny. like I dated myself. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nobody knows what the cabbage patch is now. But that was the thing I was talking to D. Bledsoe about, too, is he thought that, you know, when he referenced certain things, he was aging himself. But I think kind of how we were talking about genius to where the real rap fans get excited about yeah. references that they don't know. They love being able to look it up or, e back. or even ask people, you know, like, well, what does this mean? What did he mean by that? So I think... 
you guys may kind of harp on yourselves for dating yourself, but to us, it's fun. You oh, yeah. Know I mean, mean I am who I am, so I'm not going to, like, run away from it. Exactly. When I listen to Jay-Z music, he talks about paintings and artists that I don't know shit about. But I'm going to go look it up and be like, oh, that's a painting. Exactly. I didn't even know. Why does that painting cost $2 million? I can't afford that. You know what I mean? A lot of us didn't even know what a foyer was. Yeah. <laughs> right. A foyer, however he wants to pronounce it. Yes, Kevin Allen. One fifteenth of the collective Grand National. Make them respect you, make them treat you well. Who you gonna rely on when your ego fails? From the gutter, I'd have been through hell. Pick a nigga, send you right to prison. Listen to bitches, might not even write you mail. Stress and pressure make you bite your nails. I wasn't even gonna do it, but I might as well. Them bills tight as hell. I already got a plug and some clientele. Well, I really find God, only time will tell. Never made the honor roll, I believe. My favorite line from you, and I might get this wrong, demons keep you honest. Mm. I think that's one of those things that I can imagine you saying out loud and just being kind of taken aback by yourself. What was it like to say that out loud? I wondered if I would ever sit down and do an interview and somebody picked that bar out. That's what I, you know what I mean? Don't make Why my that day. bar? Don't no, for real, but day. why that bar? There's hella bars in that song. It's feeling. I think it's so impactful and you just feel it. It, it just pops out. I can't even really describe it. I'm like on some shadow work shit and like embracing the evil that you have inside of you that people would deem evil when it's really just human nature. So if you don't embrace that part, you can't show up as your full self because you're trying to pretend and like be a cookie cutter version of yourself when you're around different people and you code switching and you just being phony. So if you don't embrace the dirt, like I like to do this, I like to do that. You can't look in the mirror and keep it a hundred. I don't even wanna, you know what I'm saying? So the demons for me is like a reality check. Like, all right, I'm still human. I can't do the holier than now, godly, I'm perfect, and that, I don't, don't want to do that. So that's like a, it's, it's a short version of a long extended thought. And I think that that's felt. I think that anybody who takes the time to unpack their demons and, and sit with their demons really knows that that's the truth. And maybe gonna, that's why it's gonna so smoke. Strange. I'm smoking with mine. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my demons have a smoke session. I we mean, gonna talk about it. Like, like you was tripping on that. <laughs> <sighs> it makes sense though. What up, what up, what up? My name is Ian Kelly, representing that Jamla Records flag, also ODS, but as well today, my brother's Grand National. We getting it in. If I die tomorrow, let me live through this verse. I'm crossed up like stigmata saying prayer and it hurts. I think I met God through the end of my verse. The sweetest rose I ever smelt was from the concrete earth. I let the chorus be the floors for my flowers given. Every ribbon I ain't seen has a Stevie rhythm. I saw a 22 on load on a few victims. No stool pigeons, so old vision still hunting new beginners. Man, we in it open California mixed with marijuana. Mary Jane always telling me that there's no more drama. On call, let the story unfold on tomorrow. I give you 16, but Instacart call it. Hold on, so you want you want whole milk and not two percent? You want you want sriracha or you want okay, okay. I'm gonna try to recite some lines. If I get them wrong, <laughs> feel free to correct it's me. Good, it's <clears> good. <throat> Goodness, this one. The sweetest rose I ever smelt was from the concrete earth. I let the chorus be the florist for my flowers given. Wow. Not only the way you played with words, but the way you really described of course, the reference to the rose that grew from concrete, but right. just bringing that through line all the way through, what was it like writing that line? For me, I always believe in giving people their flowers now, not giving it to them later, not giving it to them like, oh, I accidentally, like, people deserve their flowers now because you know, there's a lot of things that I've given people simple compliments before and it turned their whole day around. I'm just like, oh, I, I just said nice shoes. I didn't know that made you feel that great about yourself. So that's why when I, you know, I mentioned the florist line, for me it was just kind of like, well, let's spread all these flowers out so everybody can get their flowers. So that was my mindset when I kind of like wrote that line. I love it. And then of course we got to talk about the Instacart. <laughs> <laughs> I give you six C, but Instacart calling. 
I think that there's a comedic relief there, mm-hmm. but there's also realness to it. And, and there's something that brings it back to these are independent artists. Not only is there a lot going on in the world and so many people are doing Instacart because that's all they can do, but right. just being an independent artist and having to have all these hustles and especially too, like it's hard for some people to admit that they do do work on the side that, you know, they don't love, but that's what they have to do to get things done. What was it like bringing that into the song? Man, for me, I just wanted to be transparent. Like, they'll probably tell you, like, I was late to a couple sessions because I'm Instacarting or, you know, I'm, like, Uber eating or I'm, like, just trying to make some side dough. And for me, I just feel like, I don't know, being an artist, for me, transparency is key. You know, that's that's how I'm going to get you to relate with me. So I wasn't going to fake the phone. I'm like, man, you know, it would be nice to give you this 16, but, you know, got to go get this dough real quick because you feel me rent due. So it's just life. I had fun with that one because I'm like, it felt honest. You feel me? Like it was, it was me to the core, like not faking the funk with you. No, and it definitely shows. And I think that's why it stands out like that because it's funny, but it's so real. Anything else you want to say about the young, black and beautiful? Being able to express that and just being proud of, of who you are and what you have on the inside, you know, not only resonates, but it, it manifests on the outside. And it's okay to be proud of who you are and show that and give that. Yes, yes. Here's what I do want to say. So how I told you I didn't like hear a lot of the stuff until like the end. For me, it felt so good. Like when the project dropped and I heard like positive and young, black and beautiful. And then like the rest of the songs, I was like, whoa, this is like music with a this is some really good feeling stuff. So for me, I don't know. It just feels good to be a part of something that's progressive, part of something that's really cares about the culture and the community. And honestly, like we foot the gas with it. So we got more coming. Yes, yes, yes. It makes me so happy. As a fan of yours for however many years, it's cool to see you surrounded by these people and, and able to shine and to, to relate and, and just put together great, great songs. So it just makes me happy. Man, I highly appreciate you for that. <laughs> and then to be real, it was really tight, though, working with everybody. Like, we're all fans of each other. Yes. And I think even though sometimes it may be quietly, you know, said or not not be said, like, outrightly it's tight when we all got in the room and then we were just like nah bro you tight for that yeah you do that you do that and it's like this is what it's about so we got more coming so and good. special is truly special y'all <laughs> you crack me up thank you so much for checking out this episode if you enjoyed it make sure to hit that follow or subscribe button on whatever you're listening on and if you haven't already check out the other episodes for other tracks on the album you can always reach out to me i'm on twitter at special says and on instagram it's at special says as well as always this episode is dedicated to marlon do what you can to stop senseless acts of gun violence